In today's lecture, we are going to derive uh, Hubble's law. So let's derive Hubble's law. We're going to start this by considering the scale factor for the universe. And if you recall, the scale factor of the universe is a function of time. And we're going to focus on the scale factor in local time, because that's where Hubble's law is really appropriate, is for nearby distances and hence recent times. So to do that, we're going to, this function could be a complicated function um, in general, but we're going to do a Taylor series expansion around uh, times in the recent past. So this, well, let's go ahead and be explicit. The uh, scale factor of the universe is roughly the scale factor of the universe today. That's what T zero means plus how the scale factor is changing with time times t naught minus t. And once again, this is Taylor series expansion for the scale factor. Uh, t naught represents today. And this t is some time in the past. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask, all right, how do we express t naught versus t? t naught t naught minus t. What is this? We're going to use the Robertson Walker interval, and we'll use a light like interval to help us connect time to space because eventually the Hubble's law is a connection between velocity and space. So somehow we're gonna to need to replace this a variable time with some sort of space. And a straightforward way to connect space and time is through light. And so we'll use the light-like interval. ds squared is equal to zero. And we looked at this once before. So this is c squared dt squared is equal to a squared dr squared. That's what that leads to. And then uh, we're going to use uh, light coming toward us. So that is c. So when you take the square root of this, there's a plus or a minus sign. And so that's c dt. And so light coming toward us is minus a dr. Light going away would be plus a dr. All right, and just like um, as when we derived the um, uh, cosmological redshift, we're going to move everything that depends upon time on the left-hand side. So C times uh, the integral from T to T naught DT over A of T is equal to minus the integral all right, photon starts at R, comes to us at zero, dr. And this equals R. Now, once again, we're taking the approximation that we're looking at um, relatively recent times. So this integral on the left-hand side of time is approximately equal to C times time minus T zero. divided by a t zero. Now we're gonna connect this time to some space. So let's go ahead and just think about um, what is the proper distance right now uh, between um, us and the uh, object that emitted the photon. So there, 
the integral is ds squared is equal to a squared dr squared. And if we take the integral of this, so today the proper distance is equal to s times a t naught times r. And when we combine these two, these two expressions, so this one and this one, we get that t naught minus t is equal to minus s over c. Okay. So now using that expression, we're making a relationship between uh, passage of time and a proper distance. So now we can plug this back in to our Taylor series expansion for the scale factor. So A of T is equal to A naught, oop, A of T naught minus S over C and then uh, dA by dt. So this is a dot. And once again, we're doing Taylor series expansion. So this, we're measuring this a dot today. All right, so now we have that, um, I'm just gonna do a little bit of algebra. I'm gonna pull out the a of t naught times one minus s over c. And we have a dot today divided by a of today. And so we have that a of t divided by a naught, which is the same thing as a of uh, t naught, is roughly equal to one minus, so this is, uh, we're just moving up here, we're just moving a naught over the left-hand side, so it's one minus s over c, and this a naught, uh, this a dot today over a today is equal to the Hubble parameter today. And last time we derived that this a over a naught is equal to one over one plus z, the redshift. All right, so we're dealing with distances that are nearby. We're dealing with recent history, um, which implies Taylor series expansion. It also implies that the redshift is gonna be small. All right, so if we have a small redshift, the, we're gonna focus in on this equation and approximate the right-hand side, but I'm gonna rewrite the left-hand side, one minus S H naught over C. This is roughly equal. So the Taylor series expansion of uh, one over one plus Z or one plus Z to the minus one, this is roughly equal to one minus Z. And the ones cancel and the negative signs go away. And so we get that S times H naught over C is roughly equal to Z. Or rewriting this, we have that the proper distance times H naught is roughly equal to C times Z and if z is roughly equal to v over c, then we get back what we would have expected, which is that the velocity is the proper distance times h naught. In other words, Hubble's law. And note that um, in order to derive Hubble's law, 
we just looked at the expansion velocity expanded. Uh, uh, sorry, we looked at the um, expansion of the scale of the universe. Um, and we did a Taylor series expansion of that and just looked at lowest order for nearby distances or recent times. What does that lead to? It leads to this expression really, which is Z is roughly the proper distance times H naught over C. And then if we see, say that Z times C is roughly a velocity, then we get Hubble's law. 